There's a lot of slurping. It's like you're making out with the dumpling. <laughs> Shenzhen bao may be the most difficult dumpling to get right. The pan-fried buns are a popular street food in Shanghai, where the dumplings originated. They're part yeasted bun, part pot sticker, and a soup dumpling all in one. The best Shenzhen bao have a crisp, thick bottom, a thin and chewy top, and a filling full of juicy pork and hot, flavorful soup. That contrast in textures is an art form, and it's something Kang Kang owner John Chin Yuye knew he needed to get just right. The Shenzhen bao at Kang Kang are crunchy and soupy, chewy and perfect. The tops rise while the bottoms crisp up in the pan. It's a dumpling Brittany Wang, known as Chef Bao Bei on her social channels, has also been trying to perfect for years. I asked Brittany to come with me to visit Kang Kang to get a peek inside the kitchen to learn how they make their excellent dumplings. I've argued with friends for years over who makes the best, but the gold standard, the place I dream about and crave, the one I compare all others to, is Kang Kang Food Court. The special recipe make a dough, and also have to control the temperature. So cannot complete the race, only half race. So this is the technique. This master chef, when he came to the United States, has 27 years experience. He worked here for 20 years, keep the quality same thing. Every day same thing. Wow. He has 47 years experience. He doesn't even look 47 I years old. Like so young. <laughs> you know why I think? I think it's from the fat, from the filling, like the collagen and the steam. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. No wrinkles. Yeah, okay, now you see? The temperature. Ice cold water. That is a secret. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, some secret. How many ice, how many water? He knows. Only he knows. No, 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 this guy knows too. Okay, these uh, two people know. Dumpling masters know. Yeah. How long do you let this go for? 15 minutes. Okay. After the dough maker, mm -hmm. you know, make this one. So is there yeast in the dough? Yes, of course. Okay, no, yeah. Here, here. And the important thing is yeah, you have to control the proof. That's why it's so hard to make this, because yeah. it always has to be fresh. It cannot be too curved. Yeah, yeah the texture of yeah. the wrapper. Yeah. Is, is so nice and it's like, it's chewy and fluffy. Is that it? Yeah. That is right. Is there a specific number of folds? Uh, yes. 18. 18. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And this one, mm -hmm. the stuffing, it's uh, the recipe only two people know, but I don't know. You don't even know it? He knows. <laughs> My wife knows. He's a master. Oh, oh, no, two wife. people knows. Oh, okay. You want to try? <laughs> try what? <laughs> Okay, you are hired. Good job, good job. <laughs> See, I brought you a new employee. <laughs> John and his chef developed a recipe that includes more than a few secret ingredients and specific techniques to get the dumpling wrappers and the filling just right. It's a combination. Steam Put the water, and then cook. How long did those cook for? This takes like eight minutes. Eight minutes? Not right now, you put the onion in now. Okay. Green onion. Then have to close, make onion smell come out. While our dumplings pan fry and steam, we head into the dining room to learn more about the history of the restaurant. First, I want to start by asking you about yourself. So where are you from and how did you end up opening Kang Kang and, and springing Shenzhen Bao here? I always miss one thing we cannot find in the United States, which is a pan fry small bao. We call Shenzhen Bao. We cannot find it in the United States. Only one restaurant, very small restaurant, he did it, called Shenzhen Bao. I, Went there, but I'm very disappointed. The Shenzhen Bao is a kind of culture of the Chinese snake in the Shanghai region. If you ask those people from Shanghai, say, what are you miss for Shenzhen Bao? That's the one thing that yeah, people want. Yeah, first thing go to mind. Yeah. We grew up with this. Is there a proper way to eat these? Uh, yes. <laughs> I wrote a poem in Chinese. Can I read it in Chinese? Yes, first? yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> please do, please, please do. do. <laughs> 小小的咬一口, does it make a small bite? Very small. Very small. Very, very small. Yeah, 轻轻的吹一吹, blow up the heat. Very good. Right. Perfect. 慢慢的吸汤汁, slowly 
sip the juicy slowly, slowly. Otherwise, it's burning your lips. It's working. Xi xi the pin zi wei, and then enjoy it. Perfect. <laughs> and then with like um, the oh, vinegar. Okay, that, that, yeah, that is that's, that's very important okay, too. Okay, this yeah. vinegar is a very special made. It. We buy the uh, vinegar from market, then we use it all recipe. Shanghainese people yeah, usually like right. sweet, yeah, yeah. sweet food. Yeah. You, you, whatever you buy vinegar from market, too strong. The, the soup inside is also a little sweet. Yes. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> oh my god, that's so. Yeah. Nothing like it. Literally nothing like it. Yes. Are the black sesame and the green onion also something traditional to the ones you find in Shanghai, or is that something that you added? Oh, it's a tradition. Yeah, it's a tradition. So would you say that? What you're doing here is better than what someone might find in Shanghai right now? Oh, it's a much better. Because I can prove it. If you talk to the older Shanghai people, they go back to take a vacation, then talk to me, say, hey, I tried the Shenzhenba in the Shanghai. Nothing can compare wow. with you. Know. That's why I come here for your Shenzhenba. And why do you think now in Shanghai, uh -huh. it's like okay. not as good okay. as before? The natural Chinese Shanghai people don't do this anymore. Yeah. Always Shanghai becomes a huge city. So a lot of people doing that, they are not the Shanghainese people anymore. They're from outside. They're learning. So Brittany, are these, did you grow up eating Shenzhenbao? Yeah, so I grew up in Hawaii. There was like no Shanghainese food during that time. Like every time I went back to Shanghai to visit my grandparents, that's like the one thing as a kid that I would look forward to. Like John, Brittany started making Shenzhenbao because growing up in Hawaii, she missed the dumplings she ate with her grandparents in Shanghai. A few years back, she quit her job in finance and went back to Shanghai and took a dumpling class. She started an Instagram account called Chef Bao Bei and started hosting dumpling classes with friends. During the pandemic, she transitioned from classes to pop-ups, where she sold Shenzhen Bao and a variety of other dumplings. Do you think you can show me how to make them? Are you gonna pay me? Okay. <laughs> of course! You can. We brought Chef Bao Bei, also known as Brittany, back to the kitchen so you can show us how to make some shenzhen bao. Teach you the art of shenzhen bao making. The key to this is the bottom part of it, to not have it mm -hmm. overproofed, and that's why you get the nice thick crunch, but on the top it's still thin like a pot sticker. Mm -hmm. So I'm putting in the sugar and yeast right now to make the dough room temperature water. Yeah, so why Asian bran flour? Oh. Is it this specific brand or? I just like, I just feel like Asian brand flour, they tend to be more soft and there's no additives. Mm -hmm. It needs for about 10 minutes or less. The texture of the filling is very important. The more fine it is, the more that it can absorb the liquid. So I'm gonna add in sugar and salt first. Shaoxing wine, sesame oil, oyster sauce. What is this magic green liquid you brought oh. with you? Ginger and scallions, then water. You never want it to look chunky. You always want to have streaks on the side of the bowl after you're done. I feel like I should help you. You want me to help you? Oh, good. Okay. I'm like 90, 98% there. It's too late, Jen. <laughs> you see? Yeah. The paste. Kind of stringy now. Mm -hmm. White pepper. I put in enough to cover. You can put in dark soy. It adds some color to it. So this is the stock. Oh, nice. Oh, it smells so good, actually. So what's in the soup? How do you make it? This one, I use pork skin and bones for it. The more traditional way to roll out a wrapper is this way, where you're basically um, trying to make the edges more thin. Mm -hmm. This is when I'm not a diva. As long as it's the shape of a circle, you're fine. Um, there's several ways to wrap this, but I like the pleats to show a lot of mm -hmm. the time, so. But the key to this is always have it sealed completely. Next, the dough diva tried to teach me how to fold the Shenzhen bao. If you've been watching our previous episodes, you can guess how well this went for me. Okay, so you want to hold it on. <laughs> the palm of your why fingers. Are you, why are you already laughing? I'm <laughs> smiling. <laughs> you can watch my first two pleats okay. that I make. So kind of start at my pointer finger here. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm kind of bringing this in. And my thumb is going to be my guide. So every plate is going to come back to my thumb here. Okay. Pinch. Mm -hmm. Then you kind of bring your second plate in mm -hmm. like this. Pinch. And once you pinch, you kind of pull, pull up. Again. Okay. You can always use your thumb. To like push down on the thumb? Yeah. Okay. Here, and then mm -hmm. you kind of turn it a little bit. And bring the next plate. And you just keep repeating it, but you turn as you go. Oh, that's, that's really good. Oh my God. Here's a closer look at the professional at work. She did say she practiced every single day and it shows. I was impressed with her folding technique, but then she did something that really blew my mind. To fold it behind your back? Yeah. We're doing that. We're doing <laughs> that. Go for it, Brittany, go for it. I think I got it. No, you're doing great. Whoa, let me see it. Wow. Lots of oil for this one. Like you can use like any oil with a high heat point. Okay, and you put it in before the oil gets hot. Yeah, because you're gonna cook these on low heat anyways. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm just putting them side by side next to each other so they hold each other up. They're so nice and snug. Put this cover over mm -hmm. for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I'm gonna add in just a little bit of um, water for, for the top to cook. Brittany patiently waited for the tops to cook while I impatiently hovered over the pan until they were ready. And you know when they're done, when the tops start to form a bubble on top. To finish her dumplings, Brittany added a sprinkle of black and white sesame seeds to the top and some chopped green onion. Now I hope you have a better understanding of why Shenzhenbao are so special and some of my favorite dumplings in the universe. I'm confident that as soon as you try one, it'll be your favorite too. Well, cheers. 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 <laughs> the bow cheers. Oh, you're going to dip? Okay. Oh, it's up to you. <laughs> I'm going I'm to do whatever you say. Do a small bite on top. Oh. Wait, you could, there's literally a pool of soup inside. It's a, like a bowl of soup. If you look close enough, you can actually see the soup sloshing around in the inside of the dumpling. And what's more enticing than a dumpling ready to burst with hot soup and juicy pork filling? It's just like a pot sticker and a bao and a soup dumpling all in one. It's the best of all the dumplings together. Well, thank you for making these with me. Of course, yeah, you did a great job. Yeah, they don't want to see Chef Bobby get angry. <laughs> okay. I don't. <laughs> like, no one has seen me get angry, so. <laughs> yeah, okay, good. And cut.